Hi everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to share with you all how you can replicate sending an email in Power Automate based on an email template that you've defined in Dynamics 365 or CDS. For the agenda, I'm going to cover how this idea came about, what an email template is in CDS or in Dynamics 365, what we can already do in classic workflows today. I'm going to talk about the use case, then I'll jump straight into the demo and then we'll discuss the constraint of this method. This idea came about because another Microsoft MVP in our community, Sarah Ligerquist, had the question, how do I use Power Automate where I want to send an email based on an email template that I've already created? Myself and another Microsoft MVP in our community, AK, who is also based here in Wellington, New Zealand with me, had a go and this is what I'll be sharing with you in today's WTF episode as well as the next WTF episode. So what are email templates? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. You create an email template and then you can associate it to an email record in Dynamics 365 or CDS. When I refer to an email record, I'm talking about the native capabilities of Dynamics 365 and CDS. I'm not referring to an Outlook email record, so I just wanted to make that clear. When you want to create an email template, head over to the Power Platform Admin Center settings, select templates, and one of the options in there will be email templates. When you select the email templates, a new browser tab will load the list of available email templates. And one thing that you're going to notice is that the second column represents the template type. The template type means which entity this template can be used against. If we take a look at the first record as an example, the template type says account, which means that this particular email template can only be used against the account entity whenever an email is created from that account record. When you create an email template, it is pretty straightforward. So you can insert or um, update uh, the subject or the email message based on fields associated to that template type. In this example, the type is case. So I can reference fields from the case entity, which I have done in the subject and email message. For example, I'm referencing the case number in the subject as well as the case title. So once you've created your email template, you can use it. So what can we do in classic workflows today? Well, there is a workflow step called send email. And when you use this workflow step, there will also be another option made available in terms of how you want to send the email. You can either create a new email message or you can use a template. Now, in this, WT D the, in this WTF episode, we're using use template. And once you've selected this option and you click on set properties, you will then be prompted to select the template that is, val that is available for that entity, which is case. So here are all my case email templates. And the one that I'm going to select is the case auto response. I can also define who the email is sending from, as well as who the email is sending to, which is the recipient. So once you've done that, that's your classic workflow done and it will work like a charm. So the use case that we're going to go through today is one that is very common against customer service centers. And it is when as a customer, I want to receive an email confirming my request has been created as a case so that I have acknowledgement from the company regarding my request. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the demo. And then lastly, I'll cover the constraint of this method. So we're going to head over to Power Automate. And as you can see, this Power Automate is very simple. There are only two actions, well, one trigger and one action. So the trigger is when a case record is created. So whenever a case record is created, go and trigger this Power Automate. And then the action that we're using is something that we call perform an unbound action. This is available only in the CDS current environment connector, which is made available whenever you create your Power Automate in a solution. If you don't create your Power Automate in a solution, you will not be able to select the CDS current environment connector. Therefore, you will not be able to use this particular CDS action. 
So make sure if you do want to use unbound or bound actions, make sure that you create a solution and create your power automate from that solution. So if we expand on this unbound action, this is what we are going to cover next. So the first thing that you need to do is select the action name. And the action that we're using today is what we call a send template. After that, there is some other information that you need to provide. And the next one is the template ID. This is simply the ID of the email template. In your email template record, in the URL, you'll be able to grab that ID and use it in that unbound action. So what I've done is I've copied and I've pasted it in here. And then the next step is defining the from. So this is the sender. And in here, I'm saying that I want the email to come from the owner of the case. So when you want to reference a field in the CDS current environment connector, you need to make sure that you are using the plural name of the entity and you enclose the field in brackets. So this is something that Sarah, Sarah Ligerquist has covered in a blog post. I will link that in the YouTube description. So go ahead and check it out when you can. Then we have the recipients. So this is something that we already do in a classic workflow today. I'm pretty much saying that I want it to be against the contact who's associated to the customer of the case. So this is what it's using. And then in terms of the regarding, I'm saying I want the value to be the case. And then finally, we have the delivery priority code. So this is something that is familiar um, in terms of what, how, sorry, this should already be familiar because this is something similar to Outlook emails. So the delivery priority codes is zero equals low, one equals normal, and three equals high. In this scenario, I'm gonna leave it as normal, so I've entered one. So that is our Power Automate. We're gonna head over to my model driven app and create a brand new case so that we can trigger the Power Automate. Okay, I'm about to create the case and we'll head back to Power Automate and review the run history. And we should see that it has been executed. There it has. And when we review it, we'll see that it has successfully ran. So eventually it will appear in the inbox in terms of the case that has been created. So here's one that I've created earlier. And when we view it, we can see that the email template has successfully been associated to an email that was created and sent. We can see that the case number and the case title has correctly been inserted. And we can see that the email message has also been applied. One thing that I also did in this email template is attach a file. I also wanted to make sure that file attachments in an email template were correctly sending out in Power Automate, which it is, which is great. So here's that file attachment that I've associated to that email template. When we go back to the case record in the model driven app and we refresh the case, we should also see that the activity of the email is viewable in the timeline. And that's because I set the value of the regarding field. So when we open it, it'll essentially reflect that same email that was sent out to the recipient. We can see the attachment and we can also see the email template. Now for the constraint. Well, if we take a closer look at an email activity in Dynamics 365 or CDS, you can have multiple recipients. And when you want to define multiple recipients in your email activity, you basically update the two, the CC or the BCC fields. However, when we have a look at it more closely in Power Automate, and we take a look at the unbound action, you can see that for every recipient that exists for the email activity, we have to explicitly add it as a new item. However, when we go back to Dynamics 365 or CDS in terms of the model driven app, there can be scenarios where this can vary from different processes. So an example could be um, if you want to send the case details to all contacts associated to that particular account, you can't really do that 
uh, in Power Automate because as I mentioned, you have to explicitly add the new item. It can't dynamically add the number of contacts associated to an account where that account equals the customer of the case because you have to physically click on a button. So how do we dynamically add recipients to an email activity whenever we want to use a send template as well? Stay tuned because in my next WTF, F, <laughs> let's try that again. Stay tuned because in my next WTF episode, that is what I'll be sharing with you all. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, click on that bell so you can get a notification whenever I've released a new WTF episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Let's go.